Do you want to talk about it? Love it. Ten, <laughs> ten, ten, ten stars. No, five the stars. Guys, while we count down to the start. Look at that music here. It's you love. Wow. But it's live already. It's and it's live. Keith. Hey guys, Keith Keller, Melbourne, Australia. And this is a, a test of a, a brand new site that I've only recently discovered. It's been around a while, but I've only recently discovered it called HAPS, H-A-P-P-S. They've got an app and they've got a desktop solution. I'm using the uh, HAPS interface, but it's also being sent to Periscope. It's a site that allows you to send this, uh, the file to Periscope, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, which is very cool, and Twitter separately. And with Periscope going away, we're very, very interested to see what will replace it, and that's partially what today's show is about. Gamifying business is Periscope. Um, is is HAPS going to take over where Periscope was? That's the big discussion we're having today. Big hello to everyone in the, in the room. Um, I'm just pushing a few buttons here to see if I can get it to work. I've only discovered this two weeks ago and I'm pushing every button to get uh, to work. I'll just introduce everyone. Elaine is calling in from Ottawa. A big hello to Elaine. Big woolly jumper. I'm guessing it's cold there tonight. Yeah. It's definitely cold. Well, not as cold as it has been. It warmed up today, but it's still not nice. Gabby's calling in from Stockton, California. Can you just tell us on the radar where that is? Is that near California? Yeah, uh, so no, Stockton. Yeah, Stockton is part of Northern California, also part of Central California, and okay. we are probably about forty-five minutes away from the capital, which is Sacramento. Sacramento. Okay, now now we've got you. My favourite band's from there, Papa Roach. They're from Sacramento. Nice. Okay, so there we go. And Irene's calling in from Connecticut with that really lovely Russian accent. Just, uh, you know, how are you doing? Russian that? accent, that's how we speak now in Connecticut with very Russian accent. <laughs> how's everybody doing? Yes. I just love that. And my mate Doyle's calling in from Perth. And... Um, Cool purple light there with these sort of smart lighting filters on. And um, what, what we're doing today is we're just trying this new thing called HAPS. You know, it's it's pretty funky. The The dashboard's quite complex and it's it takes a, a almost, a, you know, a, a university degree to work it out. But it, it has got some significantly cool features. And why that's important is you've seen me working on StreamYard. You've seen... Uh, Doyle running Restream. You've seen us do that 15-part series on live streaming. This is another one of the, the puzzles. Hi from Seattle. Hello, mate. Uh, we've already got uh, 49 people watching and already we have, uh, I think, 19 comments. So just to let you know, because this show is about gamifying business, the score that we're going for today is 555 live viewers 292 comments so keep those comments coming and tell all your friends to come and watch because this is what gamifying is we're talking about the idea of making it fun so that people will engage in your content because irene and doyle and i and elaine have all been maybe gabby as well i haven't asked this question of her but we've all been to boring events really boring events where you know you go for your mates you help out i've spoken at events that i wouldn't have gone to if i wasn't spoken speaking there and uh, we don't want to be part of that genre anymore we want to create events that are fast and funky we want to create content that's interesting we want to be part of it the, the, the new breed yeah, we're going to create our own uh, our, our own brat pack. So today's show is all about um, gamifying content, uh, business uh, content, but also the online content. Gabby is in the news. She's just been out on a job in the car chasing, chasing <laughs> the story. She can tell us about that in a minute. The first question I want to ask everyone, though, is what's, what's uh, your experience of HAPS? Have you used it before? Uh, what rec what would you recommend for new users? It's a quite a new site, and I just I'll start with Gabby because you've you've started uh, you've been on it before. Gabby, tell us what your experience of Haps is, and any advice for new users. Yeah, so Haps is a great platform. I've been able to use Haps as a platform in 
in telling my stories a lot quicker. You know, many times when you work in news, you don't have a live shot until 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. But when I'm using apps, I can be right there at the scene and live right in that moment. Wow. And the cool thing about Haps is that you can connect all your social media accounts and everything can go out to your Twitter followers, Instagram, Facebook, which I love about that. I don't have to do separate lives, separate videos, and then go and posting them everywhere. So it's really a sort of a multiplicity. The multi-streaming is really one of the trends now, isn't it? One, one, yes. one feed, push it out as much as you can. Yes. And where do you push it out to? So right now I'm connected to my Instagram and my Twitter. I'm working on getting my Facebook connected as well because I, I feel on Facebook I'll be able to get a better reach on my HAPS account and I'll be able to get more people to watch through HAPS when I connect to my Facebook. That's perfect. That's perfect. So yeah. actually at the moment uh, you're sending it to Periscope as well? I actually am not on Periscope. I have heard a lot about Periscope and how many journalists such as myself have been using Periscope. And I was planning on joining, but when I came across HAPS, I found HAPS a better, something that was easier for me to use. And I like the fact that HAPS also controls the content, meaning if it's something that's not newsworthy, not news related it's something that can get banned and after after every broadcast i can see that people have the option to rate the broadcast and say yeah. is this appropriate yeah. is this worthy which i like about that that it's controlled there's a standard yeah there's a standard yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting because if you're not on Periscope, that's not a tragedy because it's going away at the end of, the, of, of March. It's been going like, since 2015. You completely miss that sort of stream. No worries. Haps has come in its place. And that's really what we're talking about today. I want to pick up on um, maybe what Elaine would say here. Have you been using Haps and what do you think of it, Elaine? I uh, haven't used this as much. As you know, I'm an early adopter. I started with Hangouts, brought you into Hangouts, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Been doing this since 2011. So I've tried all of them, a bunch have come and gone. Um, I was checking things out earlier today and did my first one, Just Me. Uh, it's got some interesting bits and pieces, and it always takes you know, a month or two for you to kind of shake the, yeah. the cobwebs of yourself out when you're trying a new platform. So uh, I'm going to reserve my judgment so okay. far. I definitely want to give it a try. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Reserve my judgment. Yeah. So, Doyle, what do you think of HAPS? Have you had a go at it? We have just introduced you to it two weeks ago. What's your take on it compared to, say, uh, StreamYard or Restream and the other ones we've used, which are they're, they're not they're broadcasters. They're not necessarily a a community. So there's perhaps has that in its favour. It's a community, but its fundamental offering is that you can send it to many places at the same time. How does it compare to the ones we've used so far in that series? Yeah, it's, it's um, I think it's a good step up, right? I I don't um. I think what they're doing here is good. It, it definitely has that advantage that it, it kind of encapsulates everything that you want in sort of a, a live platform, um, which seems to be a little bit easier to manage. I mean, yeah, it does, as Elaine said, it does take a little bit to sort of understand and get a feel for it and what works and what doesn't. But what I like substantially is like the comments that you can interact with directly yeah. um, as well as, you know, some of the, the other features that they have with the links and whatnot. But, to me, that's important, right? Like these are live links too that we're getting in the feed, in the chat feed as well. So it really makes a big difference. Um, it, it does take a lot of clicking though to figure it out. And, and we've, you had some problems. We did run it like as a, as a mobile uh, test last week where I kind of joined the show, um, which was, you know, quite interesting, but it, it, it takes a little bit getting used to it. It's like, how does this actually work? And that sort of thing. It's not yeah. one click and away you go kind of thing. So it's not intuitive would, would be your uh, assessment then? Not intuitive? Yeah, not, not entirely intuitive. It does take a little bit. But 
we're, we're always asking for new features as well. So I, I think that that's important that look, they're going to take some time to get there. It's just a matter of how does it look and what can it actually do? And the fact that you can, again, connect with people directly and follow them. Yes, you have to be sort of on the HAPS channel at that time, but being able to do that is, is something that none, none of the other uh, broadcast studios have. So it's, it's yeah. really important. But I did want to ask Keith, I, was, I didn't want to interrupt any uh, Gabby or Elaine, but you know, when you say gam gamified, do you mean like Monopoly or more like Whack-A-Mole? Because what are we trying to do here? <laughs> well, okay. I think what, what's happening here is very similar to Monopoly. You pass go, you get 200 bucks. You sign in, you get 50 coins, right? Every day you sign in, you get 50 coins. Yeah. And, you, and it takes, I think, 10 coins to say hello. Cheers from Melbourne. Hello. Good, you know, high five. And as you get more coins by logging in and doing more more events and, you know, people are giving me high fives here and my, my score's going yeah. up. Um, what gamifying to me means just playing with the numbers. You know, at the moment, 537 people have seen this broadcast. Like, we've been going 10 minutes. Yeah. Well, let's get yeah, that yeah. number up to 1,000. Well, it's about make, to me, it's about making it more of an adventure, right? More yeah, an adventure. And being able to interact with people as well. So it's maybe a cross between Monopoly and Whack-A-Mole. Um, cause you want that, that, um, instant content kind of thing. Those instant interactions, which are absolutely fantastic. Oh, and there we go. We got a high five award. Oh, you got a high five award, Keith. Yeah. Fantastic. So, so what so I want more. There? I want high five. I want high five award. We don't know. High five award. Thank you so much. That <laughs> relates to a score, probably, uh, 10 cents or something. And then right up the top, it says that my goal on this broadcast is to get the $10 and I'm what 29% there. Can you see that right at the top, top left? There's a little yeah. grid that says Keith Keller is 29% towards his goal of $10 for this broadcast. And You're so it's awesome, 30%. Dude. And so suddenly, <laughs> this is the thing that's been missing at all the events, all of the live streams that I've done. I'm talking to you and you're watching me and shut up and listen. You know, and it's that it's that sort of me, us and them thing that I hate. Well, really. it's, the it's the talking head phenomenon, It's right? the talking head phenomenon. Yeah. Now, I'm talking, you're listening and ask questions at the end. You know, we've all been to those events and we all, well, most of us hate them. I would prefer to say, hey, here's a couple of uh, cool comments. Let's chuck them in right now and uh, let's see if we can get the, the thing moving. 544 people are watching, nine mm. people have liked it, three people have given me an award. We're gamifying the experience. Is that Would that be your definition of the process? I, I think so, and that's really important because I run some sessions from uh, Zoom, which then connects to Restream, which then rebroadcasts to a, a number of other channels, which is good in theory, but the challenge is, is that I, I can't see any comments. So if people are watching on LinkedIn, or Facebook or whatever, like I have no idea unless I have, you know, extra computers running on the side and I'm monitoring yeah. comments directly through there. So it, it's a huge, you know, a step forward to be able to experience it right then and there. So you can create more. Well, I've just pushed a comment into the system, exactly the sort of thing I want to do. See, here's a comment. Live links are great. There's a comment. Yeah. On, I'm, I'm in charge of the dashboard. So while I'm running it, I will say to Peter and uh, and Pablo and Mark, I mean, I can't get the grid to work. I don't know how to get the grid to work. I'd actually like all six of us to be up at one time, all five of us, but I can't. I'm pushing on the grids and they're not working. So that really uh, annoys me a bit. So I, I'm just going to let the people in individually when they're speaking. But back to, back to maybe Irene now, who hasn't spoken yet, what do you think of HAPS and what do you think uh, is it, it does compared to the sites we've already tried, uh, StreamYard, Restream, Zoom? How, how does it compare and what, what's missing and what, what do you love? Yeah, Keith, yeah, thanks for bringing me in because you are experimenting all the time, okay? All I know you and when you find your next shiny toy, which is this now, okay? All you talk about is haps, 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 okay? So I could not stay away because you were all over the topic, haps, haps, haps. So I signed up. Yeah, my videos somewhere. Sorry? Yes, I Sorry. signed up and I started playing around with it. Okay, just keep to have a conversation with you on the topic. And what I discovered that, yes, it's a lot of moving parts. I had a little bit trouble even joining today. 
Okay, reporting yeah. here from Connecticut with my Russian accent. Yes, it was a little bit counterintuitive. Even I got notification in the email that you invited me, and I appreciated the fact it's good to be invited somewhere. At the same time, oh, good. Here we go. Oh, how, did you, wow. how did you do that, Pablo? That, Pablo. Now I feel I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> now I see you. Whoa. Oh. Very cool. Oh, yes, yes. All right. Hey, I, I'm not people. running this, but this yes. is what we, this is what uh, Restream could look. Now I love this. This is exactly what I thought would happen. Um, it, it did happen, Keith. You won. But I yes. didn't do it. Gave me so I think Pablo's gone in behind the scenes to do that for me, and that's brilliant. There must have been a glitch. But we're talking about gamifying. I, I'm going to put this in the middle. He said he was taking over, Keith. For some reason or other, I can see Pablo's private talk to you. He said he's taken over, and that's how he fixed this for you. Okay. So he's taken over, and that's good. So Yeah. So we're, we're pushing buttons. We're taking names and push, push, pushing buttons and taking names. So with this idea of six in the stream, six including the uh, graphic for the actual title, uh, I'm, I'm making this up as I go, but we have actually got now the grid. There it is. I'm taking over, Keith. I'm taking over. <laughs> so that's, Thanks, that's good. I was, so, I was saying, Keith, you could tell the difference because the grid – actually the definer shows up as a solid block not as a transparent block so before it was yeah. kind of grayed out but now yeah. okay there we go yeah yeah okay thanks pablo thanks mate that's that's great so it's possible and i'm glad that we've got that to work but as as we've said it's a bit clunky isn't it it's a bit sort of um it is. yeah i feel like i'm in orbit you know circling the earth somewhere <laughs> reporting back to my yeah homemade household yeah. somewhere yeah. You're mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, what I, what I can do for sure is every time someone speaks, whoever it is, and it just happens to me at the moment, I can fill the frame with that person. That's a feature I really love. Yeah. Up until recently, I've never seen that on anyone else's uh, program, and and it does fill the frame and make it look like it's CNN, which I know would suit <laughs> Gabby because she's a newsy. Yes, you're a journo, right? So you, you want this to look like TV, don't you? <laughs> yes, I want it to look like TV. Unfortunately, my connection here isn't too great, yeah. Yeah. but I'm here, and that's what matters. I always, um, I always tell my partner Carlos, as long as I'm able to go live, that's all that I care about. <laughs> and do you typically go live face to camera, or do you point the uh, the camera, the phone at the scene? Uh, so I tend to point the phone more at the scene because I feel that if I'm the person, I'm talking about it, and you can't see the scene, then, you know, what's kind of the point? You're saying you're at a homicide. Show us the homicide. There's yes. a term okay. in news. Yeah. There's a term in news that says, see dog, say dog. So if you see a dog, you have to say a dog. So if I'm saying homicide, I'm going to show you the scene, the homicide. <laughs> okay. So for you, you you very much point the camera at or the phone. I'm guessing it's your phone, yeah. Yes. And you point the phone at the scene and you talk over it. Yes. Okay, and that that's perfect for what you need, isn't it? Yes, it is. I I love it. I am able to get out news as quick as I possibly can, just with the touch of a button, and it goes out to Twitter and every single other platform I have connected to. And which ones, which platforms other than Haps does it work best on for you? Yeah, so right now I'm connected on Twitter. I have my Instagram connected and I'm working on getting my Facebook connected. But I cannot wait to see when I get my Facebook connected because on there I have more people who are interested in the stuff that I do. Oh, and I'll be able to get more people to possibly join Haps and join this network of people like us. Yeah. Well, I think uh, from memory, uh, the numbers, round, very, very, very round figures is 10,000 users, 10 million views. I think it's around about that. Okay. It's not quite that, but it's 2020, Periscope is going away, and HAPS has appeared. The discussion today is, is HAPS the new Periscope? Now, for you, maybe yes, because you never really got into Periscope. Actually, I better okay. share myself. You never really got into Periscope, so maybe this suits you perfectly, Yeah. 
and I, I've lost Gabby's signal. There, there it is. Yeah. Again. So, um, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to the next question, which is around the gamifying idea of making it fun. The, the question there is, why is gamifying important? And what does it really mean in 2021 and beyond to gamify things to build engagement? I want to start with Doyle because we've talked about Monopoly. What do you think, mate? What do you think gamifying means um, in, the, in the scheme of things? Well, to me, it means, um, I, I guess, engaging with your audience and being able to, to sort of have more of a conversation. So, look, I can, I can just talk and I can present and I can, you know, whatever, <clears throat> show off my handsomeness and that kind of stuff. But um, at the end of the day, it's really about how do you actually connect with each other. And, and that's what makes it more of a learning environment. And it's not yeah. necessarily, you have to look at it too from what is your ultimate objective here right are you trying to educate and inform or are you trying to engage and enlighten for example right yeah. so it yeah. really depends on on that format so there are obviously some occasions where you might want to have more of sort of a i mean i'm i might be old school but a formal lecture type scenario but yeah. even today if you have the content ready to go and it's something that you want to teach you can still do that more effectively i believe with having it in terms of interaction but also you know what points and and perhaps you have it set up more along the questions and more along the content where right now it's the the points are kind of not necessarily random but they're they're not as specific i guess as they could be so that might be an interesting thing is to to focus the content rather the comments okay the, uh, well, with that in mind with that yeah. in mind i want to i want to show i want to show you something because there's the grid so yeah, what yeah, i want to show cool. you talking about what you're saying there with random comments as opposed to specific comments let's let's play this game here I've, I've created a pattern interrupt here around the idea of a question we could do this with a formalized question what device are you watching on to date now that that's the question i've ha had uh, occur to me at this time but so please in the in the uh, comment please let us know whether you're on the pc or uh, an apple uh, a desk uh, um, tablet a uh, phone and uh, that's that'll be important for us to decide how we move forward some friends of mine in florida are saying look i love this show but i watch it on my phone and everyone looks a bit small and i can't see the comments now that's important for us to know because we'll either make the comments bigger or the graphics a little bit more um interesting the second so question like, i really oh, want to know really really want to know is where are you calling from you know where are you watching from mm -hmm. where, where do you where do you live at the moment and where where are you watching it today are you in stockton california are you in perth are you in uh one of the european countries and uh that's re that's really interesting and the uh, the third question, which may not apply for this session, is what platform do you prefer to watch your pla uh, sites on? Haps is a community and it's thumping it, but what sites do you want to send it to? Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, maybe LinkedIn Live. Uh, they don't, you can't do that here yet, but it's coming. So um, that's interesting. So they're back to the grid. Right. And um, yeah. I, I just want to, so while, um, while the, the group talks about that, I just want to mention that uh, here some people are saying I'm on my on Chrome on my MacBook. I'm gonna I'll just feed these comments in as as uh, people uh, talk about it. But uh, maybe back to uh, Eileen, uh, Elaine. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. My brain is. Up. It is. It is a complex dashboard. I've got to be That's honest. If I, Irene and Elaine got together. That's right. Yay! We're making one complete well, human being. Well, yeah. Connecticut is a uh, sort of an, an, Indian, an Iroquois term, and I think the Iroquois were in Ottawa, so maybe that's the link. That's a very loose link, but it's a very complex. Da it's a very very complex um, dashboard compared to Streamyard. My brain is really on overdrive trying to work this all out. So, Elaine, what do you think? What do you think about where we're, where we're taking this about gamification? Because as you know, it's not new. You've been doing this a while. Why is it important? Yeah. Well, like Doyle said, okay, bottom line, all of this digital in business is about engaging, engaging with your prospects, your customers. Okay, if, if you're just shouting in the wind and you're not getting anything back, then 
you're you're not hitting that two-way street i've said for years social media is a two-way street there's got to be give and take and that's part of gamification it's making people want to interact yes yes you know and and this is a little bit kind of on topic but a little esoteric you know me it can be really difficult to get people to start commenting on things when you're dealing with certain people's expertise and it makes a great deal of sense to sort of start off with a question that everybody can weigh in on and it doesn't matter what they tell you they can be successful in answering because nobody wants to be called wrong And that's part of one of the biggest problems in social media is the fact that um, there's so many things that are out there that are so black and white. People put out questions and you're either with us or you're against us. That's not engagement. That's debate. Yeah. Okay. Or, or, you know, it's more negative. What it should be is everybody should be allowed to have their opinion good bad or indifferent and everyone respect and honor that but if you start with simplistic kind of questions that anyone can answer it can lead to much deeper conversations like keith i've known you since 2012 now Mm. um you know we've we've both been doing this for quite some time and both of us are very much into the other people that are around us. Yeah. So. Well, that, that picks up exactly on this. Uh, how do we share the show? And I, I, this is a very interesting point because as I, I run the dashboard, I know how to share the show. Can can you share the show as a guest? No, uh, that was the, one of the things we've talked about. I can't see it anyways. Maybe it's there, but I again, I'm kind of, just familiarize myself but when you run normal live shows one of the huge gaps and and that's why i see haps of having some of that capabilities is having the guests sort of create that engagement with their audience as well because right now it's typically not here necessarily just the host audience and yes the guests can share but it's you know a couple of steps away before they're able to do that it's not so yeah i thought there was a way to share this directly i just shared the link on twitter take i removed some of the um, the back end in the comments. Okay, we lost him. We've lost him. We've lost him again. So this is this is really very much this is very much an experiment for a couple of reasons. Elaine has just mentioned that we've been doing this since 2012, and we've tried everything. Um, Elaine introduced me to Zoom when it first started. I mean, I can't remember how long ago that was, but I remember thinking about zoom when when it first started in the same way that i thought about haps here's this thing we've just discovered called zoom it's unbelievable it's like google plus that works (laughs) now now (laughs) because google plus we've had this argument before (laughs) that's probably partly because of our internet but um i I I just want to keep the debate going Sounded like I missed the biggest thing of the so show. That's right. I, I, I've, I've managed to get my laugh in. <laughs> but, can, Gabby, can I, can I ask you a question about gamification? This is probably a word yeah. that you've not heard much about, I'm guessing, in the news world. What, what, what's your take on the, on the phrase gamification and making content fun? Is that important? Yes, definitely. I think making your contact more interactive is something better because viewers will look at your stuff and they'll mention, well, you know, she wasn't really talking much about certain things people mentioned, certain things people commented on, people wanted to see this side of the scene, and she didn't really do that. So that's something I always look into, wow. especially when I'm, when I'm on a live on HAPS, if I see someone comment something like, what did you hear on the police scanner? I'll mention something about that. Or what did the public information officer tell you in regards of this? I'll mention some of that because yeah. I want 
be able to build a relationship with the supporters and with the people watching my content so that they can continue to watch my content. And can you see can you see that on the phone when you're because you're you're you've got a front facing camera now so you're yeah. you're facing the scene so you're seeing the full view of the camera uh, can you see it can you see that what's going yeah. on that's something that's really cool that I love as well you know I I'm looking right at my phone I'm getting video and as I'm looking at the video on my phone I can see the comments questions come up right then and there at the time which is something that's very helpful because if you're doing a youtube live or something totally different you can't see that then you'll yeah. go back at it and you'll be like oh my god these people were having a debate in my live or they were asking this i wish i would have known so that i could have told them or showed yeah. them what they wanted to see yeah. Can you pick up on this, Doyle? This is one of the key pain points that we felt, isn't it? When we used Zoom and stream and restream, it looks fantastic, but we had no idea what was going on, did we? Well, it depends what you mean by no idea. <laughs> what what was going on with the community watching? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I th sorry, I thought you meant I had no idea. It looks right, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I would never say that. Never. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it, it's absolutely true, and, and you're missing that link. Like, as I mentioned, with, with Restream and uh, Zoom. Sorry, I thought you meant I had no idea. Oh, there was a huge delay there. Is that me, or is that you? Yeah, that's not me. I've got a, a monitor earpiece, so I'm not sure where that's coming from. But, yeah, sorry, there's a, a huge delay there. Um, as I was saying, that it really matters more how do you actually connect with people, and that's what's been missing with something like Zoom and Restream or StreamYard or whatever. I mean, you can obviously see the comments in StreamYard. Um, but again, th there needs to be that instantaneousness of it, that ephemeral type content where you can actually respond directly. Because if you have to wait for a comment or a response or talking about it, then people just, just leave or they stop listening or they stop engaging. So it is, it is a process that you really have, have to kind of be continuous with. Like, that's why you have to look at the environment that you're talking about. Is it live? It yes. Do I have live comments? Yes. Then I need to respond to those directly so that those people feel engaged. So it takes a, a you know, it takes on a totally different look at what types of content is good for that uh, as well. So that's brilliant. And uh, um, let, me, let me just do a bit of a round table. Irene. I really want to pick up on what your thoughts are here because when we first met, you did a video on YouTube, which we did spontaneously at the time. We put it out into YouTube land and we thought, you know what, all that work for 28 views. And then you thought, well, no, we need to go deeper. We need to go, we need to gamify, we need to make it fast and funky. What's your take on all this research that we're now doing? And that's why well, yeah. is gamification so important? Absolutely. You know, fast and funky. That's where we are right now. This is funky. Okay. This is jumping at me. I joined back. I rejoined. So a lot going on in apps right now for sure, but absolutely right. So we are basically researching the platform that will be good as a discovery platform. What's happening here now, right? All the yeah. people that are yeah. watching because this is so fresh and new and trending almost. Okay. That's why we get more views as we speak, right? In this particular stream, that's fantastic. Okay, the, my impression is it good? Will perhaps be good for every, let's say, interview I'm doing about technology? You know, with lots of influencers, experts. Probably not every time. Okay. At the same time, speaking of gamification, to me, it is all about adventure. Gamification may include coins or not coins, talking to people or not talking to people, right? Yeah, but mainly yeah. it's about that journey that we create, okay? There got to be some scenarios, okay? You cannot just jump off the cliff and think this is a, a gamification. It's not a gamification strategy, okay, if you're just jumping. But the point is that it's got to be kind of nicely, you know, very well thought out adventure, which yeah. may become a good game and as a game it can take us somewhere we did not expect to get but at the same time there got to be some controlling points around it you know that yeah. it, it's a known it's a known environment it's not always in necessarily discovery every second along the way yeah look i, I really want to i really want to honor what you've just said there the, the the concept of gamification for many many people superimposes over waste of time 
because <laughs> so many of these things are so in your face. It's very hard to find a business context. We've all had this discussion about Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat, and some people have made them into business strategies. Some people have made money doing that, like the guy drinking the cranberry juice on the skateboard. You know, there's an example in the real world of someone who created a result on a site which was primarily just for fun. But, but the really key point for most people down the track, and this is really where we are now, 2020, on the verge of 2021, is HAPS and gamification the next thing that takes us from the, these events that are so boring and expensive? Like the thing that's really important to know about gamification and events in general is that I'm only an hour from the city but I, it takes me 14 hours on a plane, mostly over water, to get to the US. I mean, it has to be a very, very good reason to get me there because it's just so inconvenient to my lifestyle. So if we can make events better than real life by not making us pay so much to get there, we don't have to go to the accommodation, we don't have to buy food, we can't get the virus because we go into an unknown land with controls and, you know, we, these sorts of things. We're now, we are now on the verge of a completely new economy in a way. You know, I, I live at home. I live an hour from the city. I work in my office, which is three minutes away from my kitchen. And, you know, there it is. I, I live a life that, I, that suits me. And I think gamification plays into that, that can we get coins? Can we make money? Can we have fun? And is it just, a, just, is it just nonsense? Or can we bring it into some sort of format? And this is what I'm really, 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 really want to know. And we, I, I saw some of your, your lives before, Elaine, and you talked about gamification. Where do you think all of this sort of noise could take us in the post-COVID world? Well, everything to do with business has changed. And the fact is, a post-COVID world is always going to have certain restrictions we've never had before. Mm. Think back to uh, 2005, SARS, what have you. In Asia, people have been wearing masks and changing their routine up since then. This is not completely new. And the fact is, once these things happen, there's no going back. It's okay, not going we're back. not we're not ever going to go back to oh well now it's not COVID anymore. Sorry, folks, it's here to stay. So finding ways around it and video, I, you know, honestly, Keith and Keith, you and I spoke about this. I was in heaven uh, when everybody started using video this year. It's like, well, it's about time. Yeah, we've been nattering on about it for years. But the fact is, it would be a lot harder for people that are having a difficult time, anxiety, mental illness, what yeah. have you, if we were locked down in this pandemic and didn't have this as an outlet. So, so making it into uh, a permanent part of what any business does, I think is critically important. And not just from a I want to sell you something perspective but on the back end as well being able to manage uh, and lead your team your employees and also managing their mental health making sure that you know you're taking care of what's behind the scenes as well as what's in front yeah I, I agree and um I'd be very interested to hear from Gabby what she thinks the new world will look like in 2021. Will it change news? Will it change the way you present? Will it change the way people watch it? I definitely do believe that. I believe that there will be some changes such as now everything is, we don't have to wait until 5 or 6 p.m. just to get a live shot from a reporter. Nowadays, many reporters are literally just doing their entire news packages with their cell phones, their live shots with their cell phones. And like how I was saying earlier, I'm able to do a live shot before show time i can do a live shot going straight to my facebook straight to my twitter or my instagram yeah. my phone and through haps 
I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly excited about this, but now, now I want to, I really, really want to go to the big question. The big question of this call and my last two weeks of intense study is what do you think is going to happen now that Periscope will disappear? Will, will Twitter find a solution? Will they fold it into tweets, tweet fleets? I hope not, but will they? And most important question, do you think HAPS could be part of that solution? I'm going to do a round table on this. So I'm going to start with Doyle. What do you think will happen to Periscope? And do you think um, HAPS could be ready for that, that jump? Yeah, honestly, I don't think it really matters um, anymore. <laughs> like you see these different video services um, and they kind of come and go. So quite honestly, I, it, it'll be like a little ripple and then everybody will forget about it. And it'll be like talking about Blab in a, a couple years time. Yeah. So to me, it's not that critical. What's real and, you know, it's unfortunate. Don't get me wrong. It's unfortunate for the company that started this, hoping to kind of create that wave of change or that disruption or transformation or whatever the case may be. But at the same time, it, it's kind of clearing out the ecosystem for something that can sustain itself and something that can survive. Yeah. So maybe it, it's not because they couldn't monetize it. Maybe it's not because they couldn't connect those dots or, or they couldn't kind of really engage that audience fundamentally. So it would be an interesting study to see why didn't Periscope work? It seemed to have a lot of the good stuff, but maybe it didn't have quite enough or Twitter didn't push it enough or whatever the case may be. They let it fail because they just wanted to use it as a test. But I think fundamentally what we're going to see is is perhaps a lot more of this sort of along the lines of of interaction and engagement and mm -hmm. gamification and that sort of yeah. thing. But at the end of the day, ultimately it is it is an exercise you know in business and and is this a viable business option is it you know is there some return and maybe it's not next year maybe it's five years mm -hmm. down the road or whatever but you really have to look at it in terms of the the business capability of the platform and then as a as a business itself utilizing the platforms you have to decide okay is this really where either my customer is or where i can you know solicit some type of uh transaction or something like that so where can i actually and how can i actually continue that business transaction further on down the road so as a business you have to see what's the best tool for the job so it's not always necessarily jumping on the first one says hey yeah, we've yeah. got this type of network we want to go with this so you know what you sign up and next thing you know you're spending needless hours on that trying to perfect it and trying to be the the influencer or whatever so look that's all important but at, nah. at the end of the day it's how do we actually move this forward as, as a business well let me, is it let, me pick up, let me pick up on what you've just said there um the, the the idea of gamification and the void that periscope will leave a small void like a bucket you take a cup out of a bucket of water and you know the bucket just fills with the rest of the water does anyone really care that blab went away does anyone really care that meerkat doesn't live anymore does it, anyone really care that vine is no longer here some people do but really that was years ago and maybe in the in the scheme of things periscope will disappear and most people will just get on with it but one thing i'm really interested in now is that the difference here between haps and the other platforms we've seen is there's this this coins thing we know for sure that that haps is free for the user that is not the case with streamyard or melon Melon app is a quite a cool app, a variation. Also, Restream, you have to pay to use the software and then you send it to wherever you want. What HAPS does is they make it free for you to do that. You can create it and then they encourage the users, the, the viewers, to promote and to uh, to pay for the shows they like. Yeah, and this Mark is a very interesting a, model. Yeah, yeah, Mark has a good model. Mark has a good comment there, Keith. Yeah. Um, so obviously the model is, a, it's obviously different and, and it's a fantastic model in that right now it's just kind of, there's no real currency there, but you can see a point where, you know what, I want to support these people or I want to support this person or, or business or whatever. So how do we actually do that? Well, you need to monetize it somehow. And if you can monetize it from an audience perspective, you know what, why not? You create good content. It's like direct democratic. Democ democratization, democratization of advertising right you can't you can do that indirectly now but you can't do it um directly in in sort of the channels that we do have so it'd be interesting to see how that how they do that so yeah. i think you can add like a payment method to the coin so there is some real value to it um but it, it, it's cool 
Yeah. There's well, other, if I may, there's yeah. other, there's other sort of si sides of this too. There's, there's gamification in education as well. There's this educational platform Experienceify where they're doing something similar, where they're giving you points and they're, you know, helping you as you complete specific individual tasks, they're actually helping you sort of engage ah, with that. Points, like giving you points and, and that sort of thing. Depending on how you respond, you get certain level of points. So to me, that it, it, it's fun, right? It, it's, it's not necessarily the end all and be all, but it, it yeah. adds that little bit of interest to it. That's brilliant. Well, let's keep the conversation moving. And thanks so much. For, thanks so much to um, Pablo, Peter and Mark who work at HAPS to sort of keep this flowing because this is a new phenomenon. But I want to bring Elaine back in the conversation because we know for sure that, you know, we've known each other for since 2012. In that time, uh, Periscope has now started and now will go away. Meerkat came and went in one year. Blab was gone before you could even blink. Is are we are we witnessing a similar phenomenon here? Are you worried that Haps might be the next Blab or are you are you thinking that Haps might be better than Blab in the sense that it will last? What what happened to Meerkat and Blab? Why did they go away? Well it wasn't just Meerkat and Blab. There were ten other platforms that we tried you know as a beta tester i was in and out of a, a whole bunch of them um i think unfortunately because it's a you know it's a form of social media there is always the chance that whatever platform you're using is either going to morph into something else or it's going to leave there comes a time when the people that put it together have to go after some capital. They, they may be looking for angel investors. They may get mm. to a point that, mm. you know, in some cases they, they have an IPO and that's when everything tanks. That's when things sort of go down the wrong road. I think in all honesty, this is just me, but I think, Twitter has something else up its sleeve, and that's why they're dumping Periscope. And do you think it's fleets? No. Can you hazard a guess, or don't you know? It, it, I'm, yeah, that's all, that's oh, all wow. I'm going to say okay, today. That's, oh, wow, that, isn't that, ooh, that's juicy. You're not saying that you don't know, but you're not telling us what you do know. <laughs> oh, that's juicy. Oh, that's juicy. That's exactly the sort of stuff I love hearing about. So, um... <laughs> I, w I want to just pick up on what you've just said there. So you think that Twitter has something in mind. I was predicting up until this moment in time that it would, they would fold it into fleets, and I'm so glad that you haven't confirmed that that's what you think might happen because I think that would be a terrible idea. Fleeting tweets. I mean, what a stupid idea. It's just the stupidest idea I've ever heard of, other than not having the edit, edit button, which everyone in the world hates. Um, you know, that's about the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But um, what I want to do now is I want to I want to maybe wrap it up. It's it's been we've been going an hour, and I want to honour people's time. We're not going to keep you for forever. Um, I want to do a last call for last questions in the chat, and I will give everyone a chance to talk about how they can be contacted. Put your Twitter handle or your your Instagram account in the uh, the chat room, and we'll push that out for you uh i'll, I'll leave you I'll, I'll go back to you gabby because i know you're in the car and you're probably wanting to rush off to the next hot story what what's your take on what we've last thoughts on what we chatted about today and where periscope's going to go and where gamification is going to go on this whole social experience you're in the news you're seeing it front line where this is the news has changed hasn't it Yes, definitely. And um, hearing that Periscope is leaving us actually kind of, although I never joined Periscope, I it kind of hurts my heart a bit because right now this is the era of video, especially with people yeah. having cell phones who can get 4K video. Yeah. And we're, you know, all these video platforms are leaving us. And it, it's kind of something that just hurts me because. I was thinking of joining, I was thinking of using that platform for my type of work. Now that I'm seeing that that's leaving, it's kind of like seeing more opportunities leaving. 
Yeah, well, I, I tell you what we need to do now. We just need to find where true social, I still haven't worked out exactly what that means, but I'll, I'll throw back to Elaine on that in a minute. True social everywhere. You have to follow Elaine. She is just the goddess of, of what's happening. She knows something and we, I'm going to, I want to find out what she knows. So Elaine, tell us how we, what true social means and how can we find out more about what, what you're doing and um, how, we, how, you know, what, what, what can we do next? Okay. Uh, well, TRUL is an acronym, T-R-O-O-L. It was originally the name of our home and then became the name of our businesses in the 90s. It stands for the rest of our lives. Ah, oh, wow. Okay. The rest because, of our lives. Yeah, I'm a firm believer in integration. For me, that's what I do for clients. I integrate all your digital properties so that you get found fast and first in search. And you can look me up. It's pretty easy to find me. I'm at the corner of search and social. Wow, corner of search and social. Now, um, I want to do a similar thing for Irene because she's got a really cool Twitter handle called Saga Talks, and I know what that means, but I want to hear her explain it. So, Irene, tell, first things first, wrap up what we've talked about today in terms of gamification and Periscope and HAPS and the, you know, the new era, but then tell us how we can find you and what indeed does Saga Talks mean? Sure, Key. Thanks for giving me a chance. So, Periscope is going away. It's okay. There are tons of competitors already waiting to chew up some, some property that's free now to grab. So, I'm sure Twitter will come up with something for us. So, let's be in this suspense. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for watching. So, my name is Irene. Long last name, Lakovetsky. But I'm on Twitter as Soga Talks. Because I talk to fascinating people in tech, and that's how I met with Doyle and Keith and many fantastic people on Twitter and social media. So happy holidays, everybody. And Saga is where you live, right? Saga, it's a river. Saga Tuck, like T-U-C-K, it's Saga Tuck. It's Indian name here in Connecticut. It's yeah. a river next to me. So immediately when I started the talk show, Saga Tuck, Saga Talks. All right, so find me there. Fantastic people I'm talking to everywhere. That's a, that's a great. That's a great little segue. And Doyle, mate, tell me, tell me about your book. Tell me about how people can contact you. And our last wrap up of what we chatted about: is it the, the tragedy that Periscope's going away? Is it is it really uh, the end of the world, or will there just be something else in its place? <laughs> yeah. The, well, I guess um, I. I I agree with Gabby in terms of, yeah, it's kind of sad to see these things go, but at the same time, it kind of clears things out a little bit too. And we do kind of get inundated with all of these social channels. So it, it kind of is, I guess, survival of the fittest or the fastest or whatever, the one most adaptable to change too. And I think Elaine made that comment too earlier that these don't always finish the way that they intended or the way that they started. And so the companies that can adapt there was no reason why Periscope couldn't adapt to this change in, in how people want to connect online and um, through through live streams and that sort of thing. So they certainly could have done that. Uh, to me, I, I say it many, many times, but as a just a closing comment, 2021 is all about the digital experience. And today I actually added an extra word. It's about the experimenting uh, with the digital experience. So it's more important to be able to go out there and test things but you still have to have that underlying strategy to kind of understand how these pieces fit to get. So go out, try things, test things. You know what, if they work great, if not, it's not a big deal. You, you have to kind of see what works and what doesn't, but have an underlining goal and underlying strategy that says at the end of 2021, I want to be able to do this and go out and experiment. I love it. I love it. Okay. So we've been going an hour, 650 live viewers. You know, gamification 101, and I've, I've coined the phrase gamif gamifying business. I went and got the URL for that, gamifyingbusiness.com, and gamifying business as a hashtag. At the moment, it points to HAPS because that's where I'm playing my games. So I, I really do want to thank all of the people, 183 live comments and 633 live viewers this is exactly what gamification is we're going to keep this game 
going. It's it's two days till Christmas here, three days. So we'll have a bit of a break and we'll come back in the new year with a whole heap of new content. I want a, a big round of applause. I can't do that now because we're not live, but a big round of applause for everyone in the group. Let's uh, let's do our little hand claps maybe and uh, we'll do that sort of um, hand waving thing that we used to do on Zoom. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go now and uh, let this um, render. I'll do some little um, uh, edits for you as well. But thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Irene. Thank you, Doyle. Thank you, Gabby, uh, for being on the call today. You've, you've made my day because we've had a really good chat and a chance to try something new. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This was fun, Keith. Thank you. Yeah. Happy yes, holidays, everybody. Bye, my friend. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas.